This is episode four in my series on how to wire a recording studio. I'm gonna be covering the TRS quarter inch connector this week. I need to make an adapter for my Tascam interface. I use this interface for mobile testing of gear with my laptop and Arta software. The line input on this interface is the tip ring sleeve connector at the center of this input XLR. I need to make a female to male tip ring sleeve cable to use this interface for line level testing. I covered the XLR connector in the last episode, episode three. So if you want some details about wiring this, go back and check episode three. I'm gonna skip right onto the quarter inch. I'm using this sort of more old style TRS connector. Um, I like the new ones as well. I like the new Neutrix, but what I found is the new Neutrix are wider and there is some gear that the connectors are placed so close together that it's a tight fit. So this week I'm going to show you this sort of more older style connector and these are a little tougher to wire as well. So if you can do this, you can do the other one fine. As with any connector, the first thing you need to do is to put the shell on the wire. In this case, there's also an internal insulator. So, slide the shell on, slide the insulator on, and I'm also on this cable going to use some shrink tubing on the outside jacket. So you got to get that all on first, otherwise you're going to hate life. Looking at my prior videos, I was a little bit embarrassed by the condition of my vise. It's pretty gnarly. So I picked this one up. It's made by Panavice. And what I like about it is it's got V-shaped grooves in the jaws and that those V-shapes will hold a round connector securely. The jaws are made out of plastic, which is good because that's not going to suck the heat out of the connector while you're trying to solder it, but it's a durable enough plastic that it can take a high temperature. There are links below to purchase this vise or any of the tools you see in this video. This tab here you can see connects to the center pin which goes all the way through the connector. That's the tip, this is the ring, and this is the ground or sleeve. So it's hot, cold, high, low, ground. All right, the first step is to strip the wire. I like to cut it slightly long. Okay, first I'm going to tin the connector. What I like to do is flip up that piece of insulation. Put a nice bed of solder in the connector. I would like to keep building this online course to a complete free audio engineering education. If you would like to see more, please click subscribe, like, or comment below what you would like to see next. I like to tack solder these, which is I solder just to the surface. I don't actually use the loopholes. Uh, I find the loopholes really annoying when you're trying to desolder something. It becomes just about impossible. Now I'm going to check the length of these wires. Uh, instead of putting the cable in from the back, as you would expect, I'm actually going to bring the ground, the shield in from the front, because that's how I'm going to be mounting it. And that will be a good approximation to judge how long I want these wires. I really don't want any excess wire in this connector. When I strip these wires, I like to only strip the minimum amount needed. Uh, it's real important to me, especially since I don't use shrink tubing, to not have any bare wire exposed in the connector. Unlike the XLR, when I tin the shield on the TRS, I like to do it close to the jacket. On the XLR, if you remember, I did it on the tip. You'll see why in a second.
All right, so I'm going to trim off the excess ground. Heat the connector. Wait for all the solder to melt before I apply the wire. Let that cool. Push the insulator down and pull the rubber jacket around. I still think these guys are just a little bit too long. I always like to make sure that the wire is in the natural position to be soldered onto the pad. I don't like to bend the wire much after I heat the solder. Again, bend the wire into position so it's ready to go. You don't want to be doing that when you have a hot connector. I received a few comments in my last video that I should have used shrink tubing on all the wires. I do use shrink tubing on high density connectors like D subs or six pin XLR connectors that carry power to a tube microphone. I don't use it where I see little benefit because it can hide a poor soldering job, a cold solder joint, or a broken wire. And this makes troubleshooting difficult. Pretty good. Seen better, seen worse. Now, clamp down the outer jacket. I've never found a better way to squeeze these than a pair of needle nose. They're kind of frustrating. But that's good and solid. It's not going anywhere. Slide up the shrink. Heat it. If you don't have a heat gun, you can usually get by with a butane cigarette lighter. Slide up the insulating sleeve. If you don't have the insulating sleeve, you need to go back and put shrink tubing on the tip and sleeve solder joint, otherwise they can short to the case. Keep coming back and comment below if there's a particular studio wiring topic you would like to see me cover in a future episode.